Hello and welcome to the first installment of my Ultimate Home Buyer's Guide. I'm Vince, a realtor based here on Oahu, Hawaii, here to put the real in real estate. So one of the biggest things that I've observed amongst my fellow millennials and friends about what stops them from inquiring about buying a home typically is, other than the obvious lack of available funds, is a lack of understanding and knowledge of how to buy a home in the first place, as well as where they stand in the whole process. And I understand for many of you that you'd rather not ask questions right now because you may think it's too early. That is why in today's video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know to qualify to buy a home so that you can determine for yourself whether or not it's time for you to get started. That being said, let's get into the first part of the series I call the starting line. So if you're still here, congrats to you because now you are officially at the starting line of the home buying process. This first part of the series covers everything between two to four years before you buy your home. In today's video, we will be covering the home buyer's qualification checklist, what the normal standards are versus what they are today in this current market. So what is that? What is the home buying qualification checklist? Well, for the vast majority of you, you will need to borrow money from a bank or a lender in order to finance buying a home. Not unless you have half a million dollars just laying around, which in that case, if you do, one, how does it feel to be God's favorite child? And two, why are you even here? The home buying qualification checklist is exactly as it sounds. It's a checklist of all the list of things that you need in order to qualify for a home loan. Several of the things on this list could take years to establish. That is why it's super important for you to know what this is early on so that way there is no more delays in your home buying process. The worst thing is if you were to come to me ready to buy a home and you don't have all of these things checked off. So what is this checklist? Well, if you've ever dabbled into the real estate side of social media, this is probably the one you see very often. You know, like a realtor pointing at things on screen. Oh, you have it. Well, here, I got you. Nice. Not cringe whatsoever, right? So the basic qualifications to qualify for a home loan is one, a credit score of at least 620 plus, two years of work history in similar fields of work, meaning if you work two different jobs in those two years, however, they're both within the medical field, for example, then technically that would count. Three being the down payment of at least 5% or 3% if you're a first time home buyer or if you meet a certain income threshold level. And the fourth thing would be having your closing costs saved. The closing cost is about 1-2% to 2 of the purchase price of the home you intend to buy. If you're unfamiliar with what the down payment and closing costs are or what they cover, I do have a video, I'll link it up here somewhere, that covers those topics in more detail. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward and these standards do not usually change very often. Unless, of course, hypothetically, some huge catastrophic event completely impacts our economy heavily and it changes the lending standards altogether nationwide. Oh no! God! Right, so how did COVID-19 affect our current real estate market and the lending standards altogether? As for the economy and the real estate market in general, I did make this market update video earlier this year. If you want to go ahead and watch that, that will pretty much bring you up to date with how the current market is. It's still current. Now, as for the lending standards, interest rates were made historically low because nobody was buying homes due to the pandemic. Lowering these interest rates worked a little too well, and now we have a surplus of buyer's demand in the market with a shortage of homes available. What does this create? Major competition. And as to avoid a repeat of the last housing market crash, the banks and lenders have tightened up all of their standards and are only lending to super qualified buyers as to avoid as much risk as possible. So generally on all bases, they basically raised up their standards. So what does a super qualified buyer look like? So previously mentioned, we did say a credit score of 620 plus. We are now looking at a credit score of at least 680 plus. Along with that, they'll possibly want to see two years or more of credit history. And instead of two years of work history in similar fields, they may want to see two years of work in that specific job, or it has to be at least within the same job title. As for the down payment, 5% was the normal standard and 3% possibly for first time home buyers, or if you meet a certain income threshold. However, in this market, they may even ask first time home buyers for that 5% rather than the 3%. So to some of you, that may make a whole lot of difference. And to others, it may not even mean anything. So is this the case for everyone obtaining loans right now? Absolutely not. It depends on your circumstances and your financial situation. This just shows just how much more difficult it can be for first time home buyers or any home buyer in general. All right. So at this point, you should have made two conclusions by now. One being you're almost there or 
even better, you're there already and you're ready. And two would be that you're not exactly there yet, but you have at least one, maybe even two of these things down. That's awesome if you're right on track. And if you're not, it's okay. That's exactly why I have this video. So you can start now to get ready to a point where you can say it's time. And as for the current tight lending standards, will it go away over time or will it get better for home buyers? Absolutely. What we're looking at right now is just a surplus of buyers in the market, which drives up that competition. As soon as that demand is satisfied, things will eventually dissipate and go back to normal. Unfortunately, if you wait too long, you run the risk of that low interest rate that they set to come back up to normal standards as well. Like I mentioned, these interest rates are historically low at about 3% and they will keep it that low at least until the economy gets back up on its feet. Okay, so after discovering how qualified of a buyer you are, from this point up until when you meet up with your realtor is the planning stage. Determining whether or not you qualify for a home loan is completely different from whether or not you can afford a monthly mortgage. In the planning stage, we will determine what your home goals are and what your needs are, as well as how to create a budget that properly matches that. Doing this well in diligently will make all the difference so that way you have a goal to save for with an end in mind. But that is all we have for today's episode. We will pick back up in part two. So let me know what you think about this video, if it was helpful or not. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. If not, have a great day and thank you for being here and giving me your time. I'll see you in part two where we'll go more in depth in the planning stage. Thank you and peace.